Hello, Cemtezcan here. I created a substance material that generates PCB board look with fully randomizable parameters uh, with Substance Designer. So let me show you the mat how the material works. Uh, I switch to the Substance Player and you will see that uh, there are several parameters uh, that comes with the um, material. So here you can randomize the general layout with the components attached to the board and you will see that the roots will be generated according to the new layout. So this is pretty much with the randomizable look, but you can also see that this is a tileable material. So here I can set the tiling to three and it will seamlessly tile according to the generated layout. Let's switch it to the one and show you the parameters of this material. So here, um, sorry, sometimes some components may not be uh, existing according to the randomization, but you can see that after a few trials, you will see the CPU is available after the randomization. So you can see that there is no CPU this time, but some after some trials, you can see that these uh, missing components may be available on the layout. It doesn't matter so much because you can adjust the density of these components individually. I will show you on the uh, parameters soon. So here on the general parameters, you will see that the solder mask or PCB color, which is set to white with by default, but you can change it to green. Also, there is another green like this. <clears throat> so there's a black, red, which looks nice, and also a blue, uh, which I defined by uh, checking the most common colors of the PCBs around the world. So you can also set it to a custom color by setting it to custom and change the custom PCB color to any color you like. Like this. Also changing the color uh, may render the solder mask texts uh, unrecognizable. So uh, which uh, gives us this parameter. This is the custom solder mask text color. And you will see, see that if you set a dark color, you can set it to a white to see the uh, text and uh, instructional frames of the components. Or you can define any other colors according to your liking. So I'm setting it back to green to see the rest of the parameters. And you will see that also, these texts are randomly generated according to the positions of the components. So if I set randomize it, you will see that these resistors, codes, and other kind of components or ICs uh, will be framed and there will be texts around these frames. So after that, also you can see that there is a solder color here, which defines the metallic color of the overall PCB. So I'm setting it to a white color like this and move on. So here there are last three toggle parameters or booleans to set custom textures for these materials. So if you set the custom PCB shape toggle as true, you can assign, let me show you here, a custom outline or custom mask for your PCB. So I'm loading, uh, I'm assigning this texture as PCB shape. And you will see that this new shape will be here. And also the components 
will be placed according to this new shape. So the next one is the custom hole mask. I'm setting this toggle to true and assign a hole mask to the material. And you will see that there are holes around your PCB, which is covered with metallic uh, frame. Actually, this metal is underlay of this solder mask, which is the green uh, cover of the PCB. And you will see that these holes will be affected by the opacity map. So if, uh, affects the opacity map. So the next one I want to mention is the IC logo toggle. Let me turn off these and you will see that there is one logo for this big integrated circuit. If I set it to true, it allows me to assign a new logo for these ICs. And you will see that this time this logo is changed by the custom um, logo I assigned to this um, input. So here you will see that uh, actually the purpose here is to fully uh, customize this PCB according to your project. So I don't want any brand or text uh, that cannot be edited. So this way you can fully change all the texts and logos by yourself. So the, under the normals tab, there is one, uh, two parameters which changes the format of the normals. And you can change the intensity of the normal map. So the one is all right for now. And let's move on to the next segment, which is the ambient occlusion. You can change the depth and radius of the ambient occlusion to change the overall occlusion of the 3D shapes. So let's change them to their default values. Also, there were another parameter that I missed here uh, was the secondary color luminosity of the PCB. You will see that we have changed the overall color of the PCBs, but there are two, uh, con uh, two colors on this PCB, which is lighter and other one is darker. Th this parameter controls the darker areas for you to make them lighter or much darker according to your need. So you will see that the traces are not affected by this per, uh, slider, but you will see the overall contrast increases according to your uh, needs. So this makes a contrast between the roots of this PCB and the uh, hollow areas, as you can see on this uh, board. So let's continue our um, journey through the parameters, which is the roughness control. This controls the overall roughness of the solders. You will see that this metallic uh, parts here, you can decrease them to make them much more shiny or increase them to get a less glossy look. So I will leave it like this. And next one is the roughness of the solder mask. You will see the overall roughness value of this surface and you can increase it to get a much less glossy look by increasing the roughness of this PCB. So moving on with the component density tab, you will see that there are six types of components that has been positioned through this um, board and one of them is the flex cable connectors uh, which is this you will see that there is one connector of this randomized layout you can increase it to create much more dense 
e, connectors on your layout which can exceed four on the design. Uh, other one is the IC density. ICs are these uh, components with the legs and also these big ones you will see and there is a three uh, leg version of them as well. If I increase this density you will see that there will be much more dense integrated circuits on my PCB. So let's decrease it back and show you the CPU density. CPUs are these. I referenced Raspberry Pi CPUs. And you will see that if I increase the CPU density, there will be much more CPUs positioned on the uh, board. And the next one is the diode density. These diodes are like here and here. And if I increase them, you see the general layout of those will be increased like this and also I'm increasing the resistor density see that these resistance uh, tiny resistors will be much more dense if you want to create much more dense uh, numbers of a component you need to decrease the other ones for example if I decrease the diode density they will be replaced by the resistors. So you need to create a balance according to your needs by here. So the final one is the capacitors. You will see that once I decrease the resistor density, they appeared on the board. And you will see that if I increase them, you will see the capacitors will be laid on the surface. So let's increase some of the components like this. Maybe the diodes are too dense here. Yeah, this looks much better and much more uh, natural by considering the means of a PCB layout. So there are vias or vias. I don't know how to pronounce them, but you will see that these holes are used to um, transfer the connectivity to the other layers of the PCB. So these are uh, mostly used on PCB designs and you will see that you can adjust the density of them and also the size and thickness of them as well. I'm first decreasing the density. You will see the holes will be less dense and I'm going to increase the size like this. Also, there's a thickness that covers the thickness of the brace uh, bracelet along these holes. So if I increase it, you see that the size will be fixed, but the thickness of the via, uh, vias will be much more high. You can also increase them like this. And this way you need to decrease the density to get a balance between those parameters. So I'm adjusting it back to a, a much more normal look. All right. So let's move on with the text segment here, you will see that there are uh, too many text inputs for this uh, material, which covers all the texts of this design. You will see that the IC codes, diode inductor codes, resistor codes, by the codes, I mean the texts that has been printed to the PCB, uh, PCB board. But the labels are the texts that has been printed over the components. So the label here, for example, the inductor label 2R2, which is here, I can change it to a different value. So this way, the randomized text 
texts will be around uh, distributed around the surface or the components. So then there are a CPU label here. You can change the brand here. So it updates every time you enter a text. So it will be harder to change these texts uh, by typing. So I suggest you to uh, decrease the resolution first and increase it back after the editing the text. So for example, let me show you there is a um, nanogenic brand here, which is the one should be here. Uh, let's change it to cryogenic. Sorry for the caps. And increase the resolution back to 2K to calculate it uh, in one time. So otherwise, it will try to update every key press on my input. So here is the logo that we have changed the brand of this IC. So let's make it Claudia because the logo looks like a C. So you will see that all the texts that has been printed to this ICs can be changed by this um, text inputs. You see that there's a code here for the flex cable connector. And it can also be changed. And this is pretty much like that. So every time you change a component layout or density, the roots will be recalculated according to the positions of this components. So which makes this per, uh, material pretty much convincing but you will see that the roots are randomly generated so they, they doesn't mean anything on a real world electronics but they will look like some electronic um, design PCB design so I think it will be helpful on many projects that you need to create this kind of boards for example the some kind of um, explosive designs or some kind of uh, cyberpunk designs that has some kind of uh, circuits here and there. So I think it will be kind of a turnkey resol uh, solution for this kind of needs. So thanks for watching. I hope you like it and see you on the next project.